So hi and welcome to our next vlog. Um, I have decided to call these uh, bite-sized behaviour vlogs. Basically just talking about anything and everything that pet owners need to know about their about keeping their pets, um, about bringing in a new pet and um, some interesting behaviour and training um, issues. So we are looking today at puppy toilet training. I know that Christmas is often a time when a lot of people might think about introducing a new pet to their household. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of this, uh, but actually I think it's quite a good thing. Um, I think you are often home for a week or two at least, so you can really settle in a new pet quite well. And provided you were already looking at getting a pet anyway, and this isn't just something to give the kids, um, then I think actually Christmas is not a bad time to get a new pet. Um, so we're going to talk about puppy toilet training today. So why is this so important? Well, basically, not getting it right is a really really common cause for rehoming dogs uh, a lot of dogs get relinquished to shelters and to rescues because they haven't been properly toilet trained and it's driving the owners bonkers it isn't sanitary if you've got dogs weeing and pooing in the home they carry a lot of diseases in their poo um all poo technically does uh, but the fact is if it's all over the floor um around children it's really bad for them or if you've got immunocompromised in the home as well so yeah um we need to make sure that our dogs are weeing and pooing outside not in not indoors um also being able to go around to other people's homes and take your dog to the country pub tends to be quite a british thing to do we like to do that we all love to see other people's pets and it's a pretty rubbish experience if you are terrified that your dog's going to wee and poo in the pub or in your friend's house so it's quite important to make sure that they don't do that um and also really this is one of those things that if you've got a dog that wheezes or poos in the home all the time you can bet that the dog and owner bond is is not great um there's probably quite a lot of frustration going on there and probably quite a lot of anxiety from the dog too so it's really really important to get the toilet training right dog and owner bonding it's something that i will talk about on another vlog um but essentially if if it's not right your recall for one is definitely gone but the pleasure in dog ownership is is really virtually non-existent so something like this which is so basic is so important to having a pet that's happy and an owner that's happy and it, it's a relationship both of you need to be happy so toilet training really really key to okay so i want you to think about the last time you were really 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 desperate for the loo how did you feel? Really uncomfortable, I'm betting. Quite anxious, especially if you're female. It's way worse if you're female because you've got a lot of your options. Um, but basically it does generate anxiety in you. And that anxiety is only relieved when you go for a wee. Um, now, when you actually, say, go to the loo and you sit down, do you consciously think, I am going to squeeze my bladder and have a wee? or does your bladder just pretty much automatically take over for you that's pretty much toilet training for our dogs uh, so there's two key facts in that we need to remember one when they need a wee pets get anxious okay they get uncomfortable and it's designed to be the case because it motivates them to go and do something go and find the right place to go to the loo uh, that's the discomfort it motivates them to seek relief from that discomfort by going to the loo and the second thing is wherever you go to the loo that's where you will associate with going to the loo with feeling better with escaping the relief from that discomfort um so essentially when you sit down to go to the loo you don't consciously think i will squeeze my bladder it happens automatically and that's what we want from our dogs we want them to go outside we want their paws to hit grass and for their bladder to just automatically go i have a wee now okay so there's a lot of training that actually goes in there it seems really basic but there are quite a lot of neurological um, features and learning going on there so the science of toilet training what are we basically doing we're teaching them to hold their bladder until they get to the right place and this is something that will improve with age at around about eight weeks old it will be they'll need the loo roughly once an hour um, and then around about by 12 weeks old they should be able to hold their bladder for around about two to three hours uh, but it's worth remembering all bladder holding has a limited capacity and this will not always follow that hmm, it's been an hour they should be able to hold it 
if they've been running around jiggling and playing, then actually the stretch receptors in their bladder will have been sending feedback to their brain that they really need the loo. So it's really, really worthwhile remembering that when a dog's got to go, it's got to go. Um, and we don't have to sort of stick to this one hour thing if they look like they need a wee, get them outside. And it's also, we have to remember that most urination and defecation happens automatically, particularly when they're on the right substrate. So you sit down to go to loo, it just happens automatically for most people. Um, and that's really, that's what we are trying to do with our dog. It's, it needs to be automatic. Okay, so problems with toilet training. Um, I'm talking about this before we talk about how, because really we have to rule out things that could affect the toilet training before we try and teach them uh, to, to not to wee inside. Um, one of the biggest blocks is urinary tract infections and it's not uncommon for puppies to pick these up. They can quite easily get these little puppy pyodermas, which are skin infections. And I know that my first puppy had it all over her stomach and it had actually covered her genitals and gone up her genitals and she had a UTI and I was getting so frustrated. Um, she was weeing probably two, three, four times an hour, tiny amounts of urine and I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't get her to wee outside. It was just, it was without warning inside and it was only when a friend sort of said to me, maybe she's got a UTI. It kind of clicked and I went to the vets and we got her some antibiotics and she was fine and then we managed to do toilet training. But ultimately you're not going to be able to toilet train a dog with a UTI very easily because if you've ever had cystitis you just need to go a lot and it's really really uncomfortable. So keep an eye out for that. If they are weeing way more than normal get to the vets before you worry too much about your toilet training. Another big problem with toilet training is where a dog's had a lot of accidents in a home and the home hasn't been cleaned up properly. A dog's sense of smell is incredibly strong. I think it's something 45 times stronger than humans, I think, at an absolute minimum. And it's just as strong a trigger for them to wee or poo as it is for humans to sit down on the loo. They catch a scent of where they've been before and that sends a trigger to their brain of, oh, my bladder's full. I'll go here. So if we haven't cleaned up an accident properly and got rid of that underlying scent marker, they will go over areas where they've already had a wee or a poo. Now we can use that to our advantage because if we take them to the same spot in the garden, that scent marker will start to build up in the garden, which is perfect. That's what we want. But if it's indoors, you're going to have more accidents. Other things that don't help are inconsistent messages. I know a lot of people like the idea of leaving newspaper down for your dogs to wee and poo on. They like the absorbency of things, which is why often carpets are used so much because it stops splash back up. But the problem with newspapers um, or puffy pads down on the floor is that you don't want them to go to a wee or poo inside. You want them to learn to go outside. I think it's way better to be vigilant and work at it a little bit harder over a couple of weeks so that you nail toilet training than it is to give them a really inconsistent message of, oh, sometimes you can go for a wee or a poo on these mats, but other times I want you to go outside. Sometimes it's okay for you to go inside, other times it's not. Don't do it, just have one message for toilet training. They are simple-minded beasts and they do very, very well with a simple message excessive accidents as well it, it's pretty much the same as inconsistent messages if they are having lots of accidents in the home they will have more accidents in the home and beyond a certain point you will end up with a dog that is never properly toilet trained if you keep having accidents indoors there's a chance you'll never teach them uh, not to go indoors which is tough and lastly it's i think this is quite this is a message that I don't think a lot of people like to get out there in dog training world because I think people almost want to go, you can do this with any dog, so don't put it down to a breed or a specific issue with that dog. All dogs are capable of being toilet trained. Yes, they are, but some breeds are harder than others. Now, I would definitely, definitely say that small dogs, Daxon. Um, but any toy breed really and short-coated dogs potentially like greyhounds and staffies they really don't like the cold and they really don't like the wet a dog that doesn't like to go outside when it's cold and wet particularly in England is going to be a dog that's going to be harder to toilet train 
so they'll often go outside and they'll be so shivery and cold they'll sort of stand there hunched really really pathetically and it's almost like their bladders kind of clamped shut as well you go inside and they relax and then they go oh i needed a wee and they go inside so just just be aware and we can look at how to do that but one of the best things you can do to help them is to put on a coat <laughs> for them have a little doggy coat that they can wear outside that's waterproof and nice and warm and it, it will at least help a little bit um so what you actually do need for toilet training then <coughs> sorry first off you need a fixed length lead and a collar or harness now i would strongly recommend that a collar is better because most people don't like leaving harnesses on their dogs when they're not actually out for walking and you need to make sure that you and your lead and your puppy are ready to go outside as soon as it's time for them to go for a wee so no hunting the lead no trying to put on the harness because in that time they've had an accident already so make sure you've got a fixed length lead and ideally not too long we're sort of talking four to five uh three to four foot absolute maximum of a fixed length lead have your poo bags ready always good to get into that habit so they're right by um right by your lead um have your treats handy as well i know i've skipped one and come back to that have treats handy as well i really like to have tins of treats that are stashed right next to the poo bag tins so that your puppies can't chew into them should they manage to get access to them when you're not there um, but they're ready then again you're not hunting for it and you don't have to then run back inside to get them a treat afterwards because any reinforcement or reward that takes longer than a few seconds to get to your dog is no longer a reward for the activity that you just that you want to reward them for they forget so quickly so you want your treats there and ready and also a toy that you can play with your dog um, with after they've been to the loo and lastly, you want to choose a regular spot in your garden that is nice and quiet, far away from the kids because you don't really want children playing where your dog goes for a wee or a poo, um, where there are a few distractions and where it's fairly nice and sheltered as well. Um, if it's if there are too many distractions, what will happen is your puppy will never be able to get to that point where it goes, oh, my blood is full, I need a wee. <laughs> um, they need to get to that point where other stimulation just sort of gets it's just not there and they suddenly realize that they need to go for a wee and what, what you'll notice is that during toilet training stages anything will distract your puppy a leaf blowing by is just the most fascinating thing <coughs> and it's really really irritating when you're toilet training so find somewhere nice quiet and sheltered and remember, if you've got a little breed dog or a short-coated dog that doesn't like going outside when it's cold and wet, try and find somewhere in your garden that's nice and sheltered, maybe a little bit covered over or nice and warm um, and just not quite so exposed to the elements because that will really, really help. OK, OK, so how are you actually going to do your toilet training? Well, first off, it's really helpful to remember that puppies have a really, really specific schedule when it comes to needing a wee. When they're eight weeks old, they pretty much need to go every hour on the hour that they're awake. As soon as they wake up from a sleep or nap, um, or before or during any vigorous play, anything that jiggles the bladder around tends to make them want to have a wee, um, and also after meal times. So your best bet is to make sure that you basically work on their schedule. Take them out every hour on the hour, whenever they wake up, after meals and before any vigorous play. I recommend that you make sure you're all prepared. So you've got your lead, you've got your coat on, you've got their coat on if they need a coat on as well. Um, and you've got your treats and your poo bags with you. You then walk or jog them over to wherever their toilet area is going to be. If you jog with them, you're going to jiggle around that bladder. You're going to make those stretch receptors fire off a message that they need to go for a wee, which is going to make your job a little bit easier. Um, so take them over there. And once you get there, your job is to stand still and don't distract them. So essentially hold the lead. I tend to sort of hold it just in front of me, keep it in one fixed place. Don't use the lead to sort of tug them around or try and distract them off of things or kind of yank them off of things. Literally just hold on to the lead and let them sniff, investigate anything within that radius, but you stay still. So they have a very fixed radius of sort of three to four foot around you. And ideally they will then get bored and they will get to the point where they need a wee and they will go. 
After five minutes, if they've not been distracted um, and not been put off from going at all, but they've literally just not needed a wee, take them back inside and pop them ideally in a crate or anywhere that's nice and confined that you can keep an eye on them so that they don't have a wee indoors and leave them there for sort of 15, 20 minutes. And then after that point, take them back outside again on a lead, let them sniff that area and hopefully go for a wee. Um, once they do go, then your job is now to make it really, really worth their while. So ideally, I tend to give them three treats for every wee. So count them out. One, let them chew it. Two, let them chew it. Three, let them chew it. I give them lots of praise and that praise starts the moment they stop weeing. I don't do it during. Just some puppies, if they're really, really excitable, can stop weeing. Um, so it's much better to wait until they've finished um, and they stand up again. And that's a good boy, good boy, as you get out your treats and give them their treats. And then once you've done that, you unclip their lead and you have a really good play with them which is why you take the toy out with you. Now, the reason for this is that a lot of dogs will really, really enjoy going outside. And that's why you take them out on the lead, because what you don't want is for them to be running around and sniffing the entire garden and getting too distracted to have a wee while they're out there. So you make it really boring for them by taking them out on wee, so they become very aware of the sensations going on in their body and hopefully need to go to the loo. But once that's been done, that's when they get to go and do all of those fun things and play with you and have an explore of the garden. If the moment they finished having their wee, you literally take them straight back in the house and then ignore them for the next hour, that's not going to help them learn to hurry up <laughs> when they go outside. You really, really want it to be worth their while when they go outside to get that wee and poo over and done with as quickly as humanly possible. Then they can have treats, praise and play for a while. Um, then once you go back inside, they've got freedom for an hour, so they don't need to be confined to a crate or a puppy playpen. But I do recommend that you keep them in whatever room you're in or in a room which has got a nice, easy to clean flooring. Because ultimately, if they do have an accident, then you can either see it and hopefully grab them and take them outside or you can clean it up at least very, very quickly afterwards. Oh, there we go. How to progress. So. Basically, as your puppy learns that they go outside, then you'll be able to increase the time between your loo breaks. Um, and it will just be something that you'll start to notice fairly automatically that you're going outside now on the hour, every hour, and they don't need to go. And you're repeating the sort of process every 15 minutes and now it's two hours. Um, do you remember to never, ever leave it too long as they start to get good at knowing they need to go outside? It will cause them anxiety if they have a full bladder and they're unable to go. Um, so just bear in mind that actually because we taught them to go outside, it will be really uncomfortable for them to hold their bladder, especially when they're young. So we have to be really, really on it as dog owners and make sure they get plenty of opportunities to go out for wheeze and poos. Signs to watch out for that your dog needs to go for a wee are pacing, whining, scratching at the door. Some owners will put in doggy doorbells uh, for their dogs. I never like the idea of this because I sometimes think that bored dogs will just go there and annoy me by ringing the bells, but there we go. Um, and also sniffing the ground and circling is a really, really big indication that your dog is probably going to need to go for a wee in a moment. So any sniffing the ground and circling, get that lead on and get them straight out the door ASAP. Um, as your walks start to increase with them as they get older and more mature, what you'll also notice is that scent markers out on walks left by other dogs will be places where they also want to go to the loo. So they'll catch a sort of scent marker or a calling card of another dog and they want to add theirs to it as well. So you should start to notice that they will start to want to go outside more anyway. But just give them lots and lots of opportunities while they're young and don't push it. Never leave it too long for them. Okay, so lastly, accidents. Now, accidents will happen. It's just a fact of life with toilet training. Doesn't matter how good you are, at some point um, it will break down. Um, but the biggest thing to do is to clean them up quickly and really well with an enzymatic spray, um, such as Urinoff, which you can order quite easily from Amazon, or 
another mail order company, um, or a solution of biological washing powder with water. Scrub that area because what you really need to do is to break down the components of urine that will keep there being a scent marker there that will attract them back to that space. So really, really clean it well. That's the most important thing to do. Then you need to have a th think about what did I do wrong so that my puppy had an accident and the reason why I say this is that it is always the owner's problem <laughs> when a puppy has had an accident. It is not the pup puppy's fault. They are born being able to wee and poo wherever they want and we as humans want them to wee and poo where we want them to do. Now this is two species trying to have a bit of a communication problem so it is not the fault of your dog if they have an accident you need to work out what you need to do next time to make sure they're not going to have an accident again and it was probably something really simple like you didn't set a timer and you didn't realize it had been an hour and a half on or the kids were playing with the puppy and it was getting really really vigorous and actually it had been 45 minutes but the bladder was jiggling around and they'd had a big drink after a walk it will be something like that but if you can really really think honestly what could I do better next time to make sure this happens again you are maximizing your dog's chances of success because ultimately the more accidents they have inside the more accidents they will have and the less precise your toilet training will be there are some dogs who will never be fully toilet trained because of that um don't punish your dog for accidents it was an accident we don't punish for accidents it's not fair all it will do is increase your dog's anxiety they will get really really worried about needing a wee and poo around you and then when you need to take them outside on the lead to make sure that you give them praise and treats for toilet training they're not going to want a wee and poo around you so you're not going to have those opportunities to praise them which means it's going to make your toilet training so much harder they're not going to want a wee and poo around you they're going to find somewhere to hide and do it there and then you're just going to be in a cycle of punishing them every time your own dog owner bond's going to be awful and your recall's going to suck so don't do it don't punish your puppy for what is essentially a mistake with the management um i hope i've made that point very very clear toilet training puppies is actually quite easy trying to toilet train an older dog who's had lots of accidents it's it's really difficult if not imp impossible sometimes um i know that's not popular opinion but having tried to toilet train older dachshunds who were very badly toilet trained as puppies I threw everything into it and I couldn't do it um, so all I was left with was managing it and it was quite a difficult situation so lastly I'm also going to say this as well we as humans we love to anthropomorphize our pets and um, we do it all the time um, we have a tendency when dogs have done something naughty or wrong to say they look guilty like my bunny is there um they're not guilty they're not naughty they're not wrong um all they've done is relieved a natural urge inside your home now ultimately what you're probably seeing is fear we're really bad as humans as reading dogs being ashamed as fear um and actually it's done dogs as a species a lot of disservice they really 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 need to know um that their humans are on their side in this so don't look at your dog and think oh, you look guilty you've had a wee or a poo inside look at your dog and think it looked frightened <laughs> I'm going to be a bit worried that I'm going to be angry with them. They've had a wee or a poo inside because I went outside for too long and left them on their own. That's why. So please, please, please don't punish them. Don't think they're capable of shame or, or, or um, guilt. They're tertiary emotions. They're human emotions. Your dog, if your dog's looking like that, they're scared and they're scared because they've had an accident. Please see is that. Look at your toilet training and work out where you can make it not go wrong again next time. <laughs> Okay, so last but not least, best of luck. If you are having any problems with toilet training, it is essentially a pet discussion of most dog trainers and behaviorists. So pick up the phone, give your local dog trainer or behaviorist a call, or you're welcome to drop us an email. Now, as it's Christmas, I have one last little bonus slide for you. And these are things to avoid <clears throat> giving your pets as food this Christmas. Ideally, only give your dog proper dog treats proper dog food because it's safer for them and it's better for them but if you are going to give them human treats these are ones to avoid anything with raisins grapes or sultanas in 
absolute no-no. These are a little bit like um, an allergic response for our dogs. It's not actually an allergy. It's not the same process. But some dogs have eaten these fine. But just because one dog has doesn't mean another dog will. Another dog will eat one grape and die of liver failure. So please, please, please do not give anything with these in, um, into your dog. And that includes mince pies and Christmas puddings. Um, fruit pips so anything that are in things like cherries i believe they contain little amounts of cyanide so don't give whole fruits to your dogs macadamia nuts it's quite a big surprise for a lot of people they're also toxic for dogs all chocolate should be avoided as a general rule for dogs but um the darker it is the worse it is for your dog um so the more cocoa there is in it the worse it is for them so be really careful um Raw onions and garlic, really, really bad. They can actually cleave red blood cells. They can make your dog anemic. Most dogs don't tend to eat them anyway, but just be careful, particularly with puppies around, because puppies will often try anything once. Alcohol, never good. Um, Poncetia and mistletoe, mm -mm, they're, they're very toxic. Cooked bones can splinter and they can cause a massive problem in the gut. I know it's really tempting when your dog's looking at you with big eyes to give them a nice bone but don't um if it's cooked it can splinter inside it can cause some massive damage it will be painful and it will need surgery to correct and last but absolutely not least um <coughs> hopefully everyone's thought blow it it's christmas full fat full sugar but if you're having anything with sweeteners in artificial sweeteners like xylitol these are really really dangerous for our pets so do not give them anything which is sugar free uh, or containing xylitol because what it will do is give your dog a massive insulin response when there's not enough sugar in there so they will have a massively hypoglycemic response and um, it has actually killed them before um so please 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 be really really careful about what you and especially your children are feeding to your dogs i think it's a very lovely human thing to want to share our food with our animals but make sure that what you're feeding is safe for your dogs okay well i hope you have a lovely lovely christmas i hope that those of you getting new pets have a wonderful time integrating them into your household good luck with toilet training and we will be back in 2022 with more bite-sized behavior although this is slightly less bite-sized at 29 minutes so sorry about that but it's a big topic thanks bye